Okay, today's lesson is going to be on how to calculate a credit line for a contractor performing a project. So let's take a look at the Excel spreadsheet we have here and notice that across the top we have the listing of number of months. And in this particular case, the scope of work is supposed to be completed over a seven month period. Over in the left hand column, you see the activity names. These are the activities that must be completed in order for the total project to be completed. And if you'll notice here, this represents these columns, these three columns here, represent how much work is going to be put in place for activity A for this total project. So for the purpose of our exercise today, let's assume these numbers are in terms of thousands. So in this particular case, activity A is going to incur a cost of 15,000 the first month, 10,000 the second month, and again 15,000 in the third month. Now just for purposes of knowing, if you wanted to know how much each activity was going to cost total, you could come over here and insert a formula which would then tell you for each activity what it's worth. I'm going to just as a double check insert a cell here that tells me that our total project's cost is 345,000. Okay. So now we're going to move to how do we begin to understand how the workflow and the cost is going to be incurred. Now I'd like to start off by saying that we are not going to take into account retainage in this particular exercise. So these represent dollar amounts without taking out the retainage. We're going to do this to simplify the process for this first go round. Okay. You see this row here, it's called monthly work produced. And basically the way that contracting works is it, let's say in the first month you've got mobilization charges. So a small percentage might be for a subcontractor to perform the work, but you're probably going to have salaried personnel that are going to be starting the job. You're probably going to be renting trailers to put in to create your temporary office, things of this nature. So we want to understand the difference between how much it costs to actually produce the work versus when we actually pay for the work. So here you can see that the screen that I've highlighted is called monthly cash out. Now what what happens with a general contractor is you're producing let's say fifteen thousand dollars worth of work in the first month. At the end of the month you're complete with that time period of work. You then turn around and pay your employees, your vendors, any of the subcontractors that were associated for that scope of work that was incurred the month previous. So your payments are always going to be lagging behind by a month. Okay? So here we show our monthly cash out is 15000 and the amount of work that we produced was in the first month. Does everybody understand this concept about making sure that you know that the work is produced in the, in the month previous and then you actually pay for the work the following month? Now, it's very important to understand at this point the aspect of when you get to bill for this work. So in this particular case where you see the cursor, this is your monthly cash in. Now, what happens again is after the first month when you've actually produced the work, you're going to turn around and pay your bills at the same time that you're going to send an invoice to the owner for the work that was completed. Now, per every contract, it is very typical that the owner has 30 days to make a payment. So you're not going to submit your invoice. Let's say just as an example, it's the end of the first month, 
your accounting department tabulates how much work was actually performed. You double check it to make sure that it's correct. There's no errors. You turn around, you start getting in bills from your vendors, so you're going to be paying those. But in the meantime, it's going to take you at least a week to put together a bill to turn in to the owner. So by the time you get all this done, it probably doesn't go into the middle of the month, which means you're not going to receive funds during this same month number two. You're going to receive them over here. So let's unhide the column and see. Sure enough, you have no cash incoming this month. Well, you certainly don't have any cash coming in from the first month because no work was performed. So at this point in time, your cumulative cash out that you have is $15,000 and you have $0 to reflect coming in to cover that work. So the delta is 15000 This is this cell right here. This is the amount that you need to have in terms of cash reserves to cover your cost before you get paid. Very important to understand cumulative cash out versus cumulative cash in. Okay, everyone take a moment and reflect upon this because I need, it's very critical in understanding this process that you get the fact that you produce the work in this month you then pay for the work to be done in this month and you effectively do not get to collect the money until the third month. This is the pivot. This is the, the cornerstone of understanding credit line calculations. So take a moment, look at the screen, follow through, to make sure that you understand. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and finish filling out the calculations. Now in this particular example, I've already pre-filled in formulas so it will calculate it for me. But in your case, particularly when you are taking the AIC exam, you're going to have to figure this out manually. So my recommendation to you would be to fill out one row at a time. So let's start here. Your monthly work produced. That's pretty easy. You're going to carry down the totals of each month. So here we're producing $10,000 worth of work. Here, 35. Here, 30. So on and so on. And this carries all the way over and you'll notice there's no work being produced here so that means these are zero dollar months that you're producing the actual work okay again I want you to understand that I've put this row in here so that you understand the difference between when the work is actually put into place versus when you have to pay for it so let's now talk about when you have to pay for it in this instance you pay for it the following month so we're gonna come in here Show this cell. You're seeing a pattern here, right? You see that the time that you pay for it is the month following when the work was done. So we carry this all the way through. I'm going to highlight all the cells and you can see that it carries all the way through to the end of the job. All right. Let's now talk about cumulative cash out. It stands to reason that right here, your cumulative amount of cash out is here. So if you go to month three, how much is your cumulative cash out going to be? Give you a few seconds to think about it. It's going to be 25, right? Because it's the sum of the two periods to this point. Correct? Alright, let's just double check it with the next one. Looky here. It reflects the sum of those three numbers. 15, 10, and 35. So we're going to carry it all the way over 
And you can see that in this particular example, your total cash outlay doesn't catch up until month eight, when you have already finished all the work. The work was finished in month seven. Okay. So now we've talked about cash out. Let's talk about the most important element as to when you're going to be able to receive the money. Okay? Remember, our end game here is to determine how much money you spend versus how much money you've got coming in so you know how, what kind of line of credit you need for the bank to cover your expenses. So in this particular case, let's come in. We've already talked about the fact that you don't have any cash coming in the first month because you haven't even produced the work yet. The beginning of the second month, you're just now billing the, the client, correct? So by the time you get the bill in about the first, second week of that second month, they then have a month to pay you. So you're not going to receive payment for the first month until sometime during the third month. This pattern is going to replicate itself all the way through the project. Notice here, you're finally getting paid in month four for the work you produced in month two. Again, you're getting paid in month five for the work that you produced in month three. So let's continue on. This shows on a monthly basis when you're going to receive your payments from the owner. Again, we're not taking retainage out. This is the gross amount that you're going to be getting. Okay, not the net. All right. So in order to compare to the cumulative cash out to the cumulative cash in, because that's going to tell us what our line of credit needs to be, we then need to come in and complete this row of calculations. Correct? Everybody said yes. You're right on target. Okay. So the cumulative cash out in this point is the sum, I mean cash in, excuse me. The cumulative cash in during month three is the sum of the previous three months. Correct? Yes. So this cumulative cash in is going to be the sum of the previous four months. Now we're going to repeat that pattern all the way through. And notice, we do not receive our total cost incurred, our total billing that we've sent in, until month nine. We finished the work in seven, but we're going to get paid completely in work nine. That's month nine. So, we're just about there. So be patient. Now we need to figure out what is our delta so we can tell our banker what, how much money we need as a line of credit to cover our expenses. So, we go back to the beginning. Remember, cumulative cash out is the difference between your cumulative cash in and your cumulative cash out. Right now, we are $15,000 in the hole. We have to come up with at least $15,000, not from this project, to cover the expenses so far. So let's go here. Notice the difference between $15,000 received and $25,000 paid. We're still $10,000 in the hole. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to perform the calculations for the other columns. And now you have on a monthly basis what the required maximum amount of credit line you're going to need to cover your bills. Because obviously if you don't pay your bills timely, your subcontractors are going to pull off the job. Then you're really not going to get paid. So it's very important that you understand what the total delta is. Now obviously in this particular case, this delta of a negative $130,000 is the highest line of credit required during the project to cover all your expenses. Here you're only going to need 25, here you're going to need 30, here you're going to need 35, 
Oh, it's edging up to 100. This is the highest number that you have. So this is the most important element that you're going to have to tell the banker that at this point is your highest line of credit. Okay. Now that we've talked about this, I want to show this to you in a graphical sense so you get a full understanding of what we're talking about. So let's go over here just to look at the cash out comparison. The red dash line indicates your monthly cash out. Just as we had calculated over here in this screen. But I only want you to focus right now on what your cash out is. So at this point, this line here represents your cumulative cash out and it matches with the number of months. Okay, now let's go back for a minute. Notice I did not show a graph for the monthly work produced. Why is that? Anybody have an idea? Give me a few minutes to think about it. Okay. The primary reason why I've not shown this is, it's the only reason I put this row in here to begin with was so that you could understand the relationship between when the work's actually produced and when you incur the expense. Trying to make this process transparent. At this point, the monthly work production has no bearing on what the line of credit is that I need. So that's the reason why I've not added it in this chart. Okay, so now let's go look at our cash in comparison. Notice this the light blue line is your monthly cash in that's reflected in this row. Okay, for each month, our highest cash in is going to be 130,000. And notice it's in month nine relative to our highest cash out was 130,000 in month eight. So there's a lag of a month of when you're going to need those funds. So let's go back here. So this shows your overall comparison. Now if our end goal is to get to what is the cumulative cash in versus the cumulative cash out so we can come up with the line of credit, I really need to combine these two graphs, correct? If the answer was yes, you got it right. If it was no, eh, you didn't. All right, so let's take a look at this. Notice again, the monthly work produced, I've highlighted in very faint line because it don't really it doesn't really mean anything at this point okay it was simply used so that you understand the process of when you get to bill for things the green line represents your cumulative cash in now I have scaled this to match up with the number of months notice that this is month eight here and our ob objective here is to find the greatest month of the delta between what you're bringing in versus what you're spending. It's in month eight. So the cumulative cash out versus cash in shows the graph here at month eight, the highest value to be 130,000. If you were to take the value of 345, which is your cumulative cash out, and add to it an income of 215,000, the net difference is 130K. So now you have been able to determine what your total line of credit will need to be, and you're gonna impress your banker because you're gonna tell them exactly by month how much money you're gonna need, and providing you stay on schedule from what you created over here representing your tasks, and when you think you're going to incur your expenses, you're good to go. So that concludes today's lesson on how to calculate a line of credit.